Coming up on Harvest, now that the much-talked-about four blood moons have come and gone, what's next? Pastor John Hagee discusses the spiritual significance of the recent lunar eclipse and change your perspective, change your life. Pastor Mark Lance shares the keys to godly success in today's motivational moment. We'll wrap up coverage of the papal visit to the United States, plus Brian Bush updates us on some ongoing strife in Jerusalem. All that and more comes as we get your week started with information and inspiration here on Harvest. Hello and welcome to Harvest on this post-Blood Moon Monday. <laughs> Glad you could be with us and trust that you had a good view last night. Uh, I know around here it was tough for us guys. We had the, the, uh, the permaclouds cloud settled in and uh, just nothing. 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 N-O-T-H-I-N-G. I saw nothing. And I started, <laughs> Chuck, at about 8.15 p.m. Just kind of going outside trying to spot and find the moon. Could not find it. Got in the car, mm -hmm. drove around the city, <laughs> still Looking. no blood moon. What about you, Chuck? I sent my son outside about every <laughs> half hour, had him take his texting device, said, let me know if there's anything worth coming out for you. Yeah, yeah. He didn't, he said, nah, there's nothing here. We were all ready. We built, a, had a little fire in oh. the fire pit and, uh, you know, just, it was there around 7.30ish or so, just as uh, the, whatever they call it, penumbra started over, but mm -hmm. nothing once, once the eclipse started and my daughter, uh, said, I was 29 the last time this happened, and you're going to be 29 the next time it happens. Unfortunately, we're not going to get to share it tonight. Well, my twin did call me from New York, and she says, oh, do you see it? It's bright red. I can see it. I was like, no, the moon is not showing up in it's gone. the Midwest. Yeah. Well, let's catch up with Pete Summerall. He's down in the great city of New Orleans. And Pete, we've got to ask you, uh, was there a visible blood moon in New Orleans last night? No, it was 100% overcast and uh, spotty rain, so no, oh. no, no viewing of the moon. Although there, when I got out of the car and went into the hotel, there did seem to be a lot of crazy people walking. <laughs> I was going yeah, to say, in New Orleans, that might be a good thing that it wasn't visible because a full moon is just enough. But my goodness, a super lunar eclipse, blood moon—that really could have gotten. Uh, some funny folks out on the streets last night. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tell us a little bit about uh, about your time there uh, this week. I know you're on on the business of LaCie Broadcasting. We talked about WHNO last week and uh, really throughout the month of September as we reminisced a little bit about the Katrina days, but it's just uh, amazing to see that we've still got a great station there that's reaching so many people each and every day. We do. This station has done phenomenally well in over 20 years of being on the air, and uh, it took about 20 years to get the license to begin with, and it was something that my dad felt very near and dear to since uh, he was born in New Orleans. In fact, in one of the early days of uh, operating the station, where I was driving him through the Garden District, and he looked across the uh, uh, the, the river and, and the Mississippi, and he looked over on the other side, and he said, that, that's a shipyard just like what my dad would have worked in, which would have been my grandfather. And so, you know, it really has been an important station for us overall. And uh, we've got some business meetings today, but one of the things I'm going to do is we're going to go over and uh, look at our transmitter site where our master control and production has been operating from, and uh, we'll have a little bit on that on tomorrow's program. You know, Pete, I know Katrina definitely affected the number of churches there. Some church, uh, churches packed up because they had no church to return to, the congregants. Um, talk about the impact of the station and the churches there. Have we seen more churches come on the air? You know, for a while, Valerie, it went away. It, it mm -hmm. did die down. Uh, people were in a very, uh, I, I think, a, a financial challenge right after the hurricane, but some churches indeed had a very difficult time and uh, literally disappeared with their congregants going to Baton Rouge or Houston or Atlanta and other places. Uh, other churches have exploded and have done phenomenally well. And uh, fortunately, we've got a number of great churches on the station here in New Orleans and very, very thankful for each one who's been a part of what we're doing. And, you know, the economy in New Orleans overall is, is booming. Um, there are, as usual, some elements and some pockets that have not recovered, 
But at the same time, overall, uh, there's more tourists, there's more restaurants, more hotels, uh, more business, uh, more things, good things are going on in New Orleans than ever before. Pete, I want to get your thoughts on a story that uh, you brought our attention to over the weekend, and that is Mark Zuckerberg, uh, the CEO of Facebook, wants to make sure that everybody has Internet access by 2020. He's working with the Gates Foundation. Now, you're a little bit like Johnny Cash. You've been everywhere. <laughs> and I, I know that where you have been, perhaps Internet access is about 2,000th on the list of needs for people. Your thoughts on that story? Chuck, when I first saw that story, frankly, it really irritated me, almost to the point of anger. Uh, I thought this was in incredibly arrogant uh, uh, and uh, of people who are really out of touch with reality. Now, I'll also say the, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation around the world has done some phenomenal work in health care, uh, in, in vaccinations, and clean water, and helping people live a better life. So I take my hat off to them as they have spent literally billions of dollars of, you know, frankly, their riches uh, on helping people, you know, have a better life. On the other hand, evidently, uh, Facebook and Mark Zuckerberg are teaming up with Bill and Melinda Gates to, first of all, bring Internet access to refugee camps, which I've got mixed feelings about that because you really don't know who you're giving Internet access to. But secondly, a, a vow or a pledge to offer Internet access to every person on Earth by 2020. They have no idea how most of the people live on, on Earth. And I, maybe Bill and Melinda Gates do, but I don't know that Mark Zuckerberg does. Uh, how can they bring Internet access to people who have never seen or much less used a telephone? They, they, they don't have the resources to own their own Bible. All they're looking for is, is maybe a gallon of fresh water and one meal a day, and we want to give them Internet access? I think we need to work on a little more of the basic staples in life to make sure people aren't dying of starvation, malnutrition, lack of, of minimal health care, et cetera. Uh, Pete, uh, going to our, our theme for this month of spread the word is a bit of a contrast. Uh, as you're mentioning, Internet access in refugee camps and uh, to every person on planet Earth when just the, the technology doesn't seem to support that. Uh, by the same token, with LaCie Ministries and LaCie Broadcasting, we're getting the word of God out through shortwave radio, which is a tried and true proven technico technological mass media uh, stream. Uh, plus, with Spread the Word, getting the printed page of God's word into the hands of people who are spiritually hungry around the world. If you can uh, just share a little bit about this special month's focus and uh, really uh, what we're aiming to do. Well, it really is important, Stefan, for us to be able to get the Word of God out to people who really do need it. And uh, we have a goal of getting 10,000 Bibles into Africa and to English-speaking nations. And uh, we look forward to being able to place a Bible into people's hands. As you and I both well know, sometimes it takes at least half, sometimes two-thirds of a month's salary of a family to be able to buy a Bible. Um, on a local basis. That's just not going to happen. As Pastor Solomon has told us repeatedly, in Uganda, Uganda is considered a Christian nation, but 90% of the people who live in Uganda cannot afford a Bible. That's a, that's a disturbing trend. Um, as we were in Nicaragua recently, uh, they were telling us that uh, sometimes there's only one Bible to a church. Consequently, people will literally walk for miles just to be able to get to a church and have a few minutes where they can personally read the only Bible in that church. So it's very important for us to be able to spread the word, and I'm so thankful that Middle East Television is reaching a lot of the refugee camps uh, that uh, Facebook and, and the Gates Foundation are talking about. I'm thankful for shortwave radio reaching even further into areas that are incredibly undeveloped and is the only radio that they can pick up. And so uh, we have great opportunities. We're thankful for them uh, and looking forward to being able to spread the word even more than we do right now. Pete, thanks for your time and your thoughts today. Look forward to uh, catching up with you again tomorrow from sure New Orleans, right? Yep. All right, wonderful. Absolutely. Well, listen, we do have this special campaign, and if you've yet to participate, we'd love to hear from you today. Help spread the word. You see that number on your screen, 1-800-365-3732. All it takes is $5 to give one Bible. 
that will change a person and a family, potentially a community's life forever. A gift of $100 will send out 20 Bibles, a gift of $10, two Bibles. You can do the math. Just keep multiplying by five <laughs> and sow your best seed today to sow and spread the Word of God. We want to connect with you. You can share your thoughts with us today on Twitter, on Facebook, live at lessee.com as well. Chuck is up next with the international news. Got Facebook? Follow The Harvest Show. Comment and share your opinions on current events. Watch the most inspiring guest interviews right here. Watch my weekly video updates from Israel. Facebook.com slash The Harvest Show. Like us today. On this Monday, September 28, 2015, here's what's happening in your world. Immediately after his return to the Vatican, Pope Francis paid a visit to St. Mary Major Basilica this morning, thanking God for the positive outcome of his apostolic visit to Cuba and the United States. Francis laid a bouquet of flowers at an altar and spent a few minutes in private prayer in front of the image of the Madonna, as is his custom when traveling back home from a trip abroad. Pope Francis spoke for nearly an hour at a media on board the papal plane heading back to Rome. The pontiff talked about a range of serious issues the church is currently dealing with, but also the warm welcome he received here in the U.S. Francis also spoke about the immigration crisis in Europe and said building barriers, referring to Hungary's fencing along his borders, is only going to bring more hatred. Royal Dutch Shell will cease exploration in Arctic waters off Alaska's coast Following disappointing results from an exploratory well, the announcement is a huge blow to Shell, which was counting on offshore drilling in Alaska to help it drive future revenue. Environmentalists who had tried repeatedly to block the project welcomed that news. Shell has spent upward of $7 billion on Arctic offshore exploration. Drillers found indications of oil and gas, but not in sufficient quantities to warrant more exploration at the site. Environmental groups say oil exploration in the ecologically fragile Arctic could lead to increased greenhouse gases, crude oil spills, and a disaster for polar bears, walrus, and ice seals. Israeli police scuffled with Palestinian protesters outside a Jerusalem holy site today, just hours after clashes broke out inside the site itself. Palestinians as well as Jewish Israelis ran away from police who fired stun grenades and tear gas. The hilltop compound in Jerusalem's old city is a frequent flashpoint and its fate is a core issue at the heart of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. It's known to Jews as the Temple Mount, the site of the two biblical Jewish temples. Muslims revere it as the noble sanctuary. They believe the prophet Muhammad ascended to heaven from there. Pro-secession parties pushing for Spain's northeastern Catalonia region to break away and form a new nation won a landmark vote Sunday. They captured a regional parliamentary majority. Now that result sets up a possible showdown over independence with the central government in Madrid. The Catalans are fiercely proud of their own distinct language and culture. Many who favor breaking away from Spain say their region, which represents nearly a fifth of Spain's economic output, pays too much in taxes and receives less than its fair share of government investment. The independent sentiment grew during Spain's near economic meltdown during the financial crisis. And Typhoon Dewan is expected to make landfall in northern Taiwan tonight after sweeping through Japan's southern islands. The storm's maximum sustained winds are estimated at 114 miles an hour. They have gust up to 141. Dewan is to set to move across the Taiwan Strait and strike China's southeastern Fujian province Tuesday morning. Taiwan's main railway links and several domestic and international flights have been suspended as Typhoon Duan approaches. Coming up next, Pastor John Hagee joins us to discuss the spiritual significance of last night's lunar eclipse. And Brian Bush is standing by in Israel with an update. What do you have for us, Brian? Hello, Chuck. It's good to be with you from this beautiful day here in Jerusalem, although everything is not necessarily beautiful here in the Old City. I'll have an update on what's happening a little bit later on in the show, as well as updating you on Russia's furthering involvement in Syria. Friends, the Harvest Show will continue right after this. 
change a child's life forever, send them a Bible. Every $5 you give today will send a Bible to a boy or girl in Africa who is hungry to know more about God. Christian leaders in Africa have asked us to help send as many Bibles as possible. Please help us respond to their urgent request. Just $25 sends five Bibles, $50 sends 10. Children are waiting, so please give now. Visit us online at lacie.com. If you want to do more and be more, but your stamina runs out of steam, you need the top-selling Essential Vitamin Mineral Pack by Dr. Rodrigo Rodriguez. The Doctor's Making Healthy Choices Essential Pack costs only $59.95, but the health benefits are priceless. You get Mineral Concentrate, an unsurpassed formula of trace minerals essential to good health. Omega-3 for overall vascular support and healthy brain function. Vita Sprouts, a superior form of multivitamin vitamins and you get Sol you see for a strong immune system that's mineral concentrate omega-3 vita sprouts and Sol you see an incredible value for only 59.95 and if you act now shipping is free call 1-800-965-2345 or go to mhclife.com to get the doctor's essential pack from making healthy choices that's 1-800-965-2345 or mhclife.com Dr. Lester Sumrall was given a global vision to reach a million souls every day for Jesus Christ. To fulfill his God-given assignment, he began establishing the many outreaches of Lacey Broadcasting. Today, the ministry reaches millions of people in more than 190 nations through the power of television, radio, free Bibles, shortwave satellite, and prayer line. But we need your help to reach millions more. Will you join Partners in Faith and help us spread the gospel around the world? Will you commit to giving a monthly gift of $25, $50, $100 or more. Dr. Sumrall knew he couldn't fulfill his vision without the help of thousands of partners. But don't wait. Become a partner in faith today. Call 1-800-365-3732 or visit lacy.com to give safe and secure online. The Bible says he who wins souls is wise. Make the wise choice today to become a partner in faith and help us win souls for Jesus. John Hagee is the founder and senior pastor of the 22,000-member Cornerstone Church in San Antonio, Texas. He has authored 38 major books, including the New York Times bestseller, Four Blood Moons, which is what he joins me to talk about today. Hi, Pastor Hagee. Welcome back to The Harvest Show. Thank you, Valerie. It's a pleasure to be with you. So, Pastor Hagee, there has been much speculation about the occurrence of the fourth blood moon that occurred just hours ago. What does the Bible tell us about blood moons? The Bible tells us about, about blood moons that God is very definitely sending signals to mankind through these blood moons. The message begins in Genesis 1:14 where the Bible says, And God said, Let there be lights in the heavens, and let them be for signs. That Hebrew word signs is oath, which means signals. Fast forward to Psalms 19, where King David said, The heavens declare the glory of the Lord. Day to day pours out speech, and night reveals the knowledge. Look at those three words. Declare, speech, and knowledge coming from the heavens. In the, New, in the Old Testament, Joshua declared that God commanded the sun, the moon, and the stars to stand still for about a day until Israel could defeat its enemies. This demonstrates God's absolute control of the heavens. In the text that inspired the book, Four Blood Moons, Joel 2 and 30, the prophet Joel writes, And I will show wonders in the sky, the sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood. The three wise men followed the star in the east, and God had that star leading them for about four or five months until they came to where Jesus Christ was born in Bethlehem's manger. So we do have a strong Bible basis for knowing that God sends signals to mankind through the sun, the moon, and the stars. Okay, so for astrologists who say, oh, this is just astrology, you're saying that there are, there's a difference between biblical signs and wonders and astrology. 
meteorology. God controls the sun, the moon, and the earth to create a blood moon. Mm -hmm. When the sun shines through the atmosphere of the earth, it causes the moon to become red. Only God can do that. But the answer is astrology is the worship of the stars, which the Bible defines as witchcraft. Astronomy is an exact science which studies the alignment of celestial bodies. Pastor, would you explain the link between the blood moons and Israel or the Jewish people? The blood moons uh, and the Jewish people are connected in this regard. In 1492, King, uh, and King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella produced the Edict of Expulsion. They simply kicked all of the Jewish people out of Spain and said, you have to leave in 12 days. They left with what they could carry in their suitcase. All of their possessions were lost. Many of the Jewish people gave their children to Gentiles uh, to raise because they were leaving Spain on ships that were not seaworthy. In 1492, this is when Columbus sailed to find America, and America became the new home for the Jewish people, but that's why he left. He was looking for a new home for the Jewish people. The next tetrad of blood moons that relates to Israel is in 1948 when Israel became a state. The next and third set of, of four blood moons came in 1967 when Jerusalem was reunited with the state of Israel after almost 2,000 years. And now we have in the year 2014 and 15 the final tetrad, the four blood moons, and each of them appearing on uh, the Passover and Feast of Tabernacles. In 2014, the first blood moon appeared in this final tetrad in April, exactly on Passover. 2014, on the Feast of Tabernacles. 2015, the third blood moon was on the day of Passover. And 2015, it's going to be on the Feast of Tabernacles. All of those exact dates divinely orchestrated by God to demonstrate his sovereign control and absolute willingness to send us a message that we are getting ready for the King of Kings to make his appearance. Well, that kind of ties into my next question. I think that there are some Christians who are kind of disappointed. They're saying, you know, the four blood moons have occurred now and nothing seemingly has happen happened um, that has spiritual significance. What would you say to them? Uh, I'd say wake up and smell the coffee. <laughs> America began the Iran nuclear. Uh, America began the Iran nuclear discussion in 2014. And they closed this Iran deal last week. This Iran nuclear deal is insanity, and here is why. One, what concern is because of the fact that uh, America is giving to Iran $150 billion. Iran is the sworn enemy of Israel. They dance in the street and say, death to the Jews and death to America. Their leaders are saying that Israel will not exist in 25 years. Iran is celebrated around the world as being a terrorist state. America has been negotiating with them about the future of Israel, and we are giving them $150 billion dollars with which they can buy weapons of war that Hamas and Hezbollah, which are trained and equipped by Iran, will have the latest rockets to fire into Israel, and Jewish blood is going to be on the hands of the American people. God does not care what we do to China or to Russia, but he's very, very interested in what we do with Israel. God is the defender of Israel, and he has said, that he 
He that keepeth Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. He has also said, I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse those who curse you. In this last two years, America has negotiated a covenant with death and when something negative happens to Israel because of the billions of dollars we're giving to the people who have sworn to murder the Jewish people, God is going to take it up with the United States of America on a major scale. Well, Pastor Hagee, let me ask you about the Pope. We know that the United States welcomed him with open arms. Does the Pope in any way tie into end time events? Uh, what connects the Christians in the uh, United States with the nation of Israel is the Bible. Mm -hmm. Supporting Israel is not a political issue, it's a Bible issue. Israel is the only nation created by a sovereign act of God. Israel was created by God and Israel is defended by God. Jerusalem is the city of God. The Bible says that word for word. Jerusalem is the future of the universe. This is where Jesus Christ is going to rule the world forever. Israel is the future of the world, not Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. not Rome, not Iran, not Russia, not China. The future of the world is in Israel. Israel is the only nation about which God has made this promise. I will bless those that bless you and curse those that curse you. If you observe world history, it can be defined in that one sentence. The Egyptians came against the Jewish people and God destroyed them. That happened to the Persians. It happened to the Babylonians. It happened to the Greeks. It happened to the Romans. It happened to Hitler and his Nazis. Any nation that lifts their hand against Israel, God brings judgment. America in this nuclear ideal with Iran has betrayed the state of Israel and we are going to pay for it. Well, Pastor Hagee, before I let you go, with all of these signs and wonders occurring in the heavens, how should we be praying? I have said to my congregation and have said to the global television, the thing that we should be praying for is to get our families together and make sure that every member of our individual families are ready for the imminent appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, when you see these signs, when you see these signs in the heavens, lift up your eyes. Lift up your eyes because our answer is coming from God in heaven. And the thing that we're looking for is the coming of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Lift up your eyes and rejoice for your redemption draweth nigh. We see these signs. We have seen the most elaborate celestial display of God's power in many years. God is saying, this is my two-minute warning. Get ready. The game is about over. Well, uh, you know, watching the fourth, that fourth of the final blood moon, um, is there anything you'd like to add? You know, when you look at it and, and see God's work and his handiwork in the skies, what is going through your mind? It's a thrilling thing to me that God cares enough about me and cares enough about the righteous on this earth to go through the detail of presenting the four blood moons and announcing the dates thousands of years ago, confirming it with NASA, and now anyone that has an ear, let him hear that the King of Glory is on his way. We are not we are pilgrims and strangers on this earth. We are running the last lap of the dispensation of grace. Heaven is just around the corner. Well, Pastor Hagee, it is always a delight to talk with you. And every time I speak with you, I learn something new. Thank you so much for joining us here on Harvest. Thank you, Valerie. It's a pleasure to be with you. And to connect with Pastor Hagee, go to jhm.org or go to harvest-tv.com for a link to his new project, Four Blood Moons. Harvest continues in just a moment. Jesus said, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Do you have some treasures like silver and gold coins or old jewelry that you don't wear anymore? 
Why not invest them into changing lives for Jesus? Ask yourself if these treasures are really worth keeping, or should you invest them into making an eternal difference in someone's life? Call 1-800-365-3732 for a prepaid insured shipping envelope. Lay up your treasure in heaven. It'll be waiting for you when you get there. In the last 15 years, friends like you have helped send over 700,000 Bibles to anyone who requests a copy through our Spread the Word ministry. God has certainly been working powerfully through your support. The Book of Romans says, How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. That's why we're so thankful for your partnership to help us take the best news of all time to more of those who are desperate to hear it. It costs just $5 to send a Bible to someone hungry to read it in Africa, South America, or many other places around the globe. Through your generosity, many thousands have already read about the saving grace of Jesus Christ. And with your support, we look forward to helping fulfill Dr. Lester Somrall's vision of reaching the untold billions yet untold with the gospel. Turbulent weekend in the Middle East. That's why Lucy keeps a correspondent there. Brian Bush joins us now from Jerusalem. And Brian, these clashes at the Al-Aqsa Mosque have continued. Where are we at with this whole situation? Well, hey, Chuck, good to be with you. The first thing I want to say before answering your question is, again, friends, this is a very localized situation. It's political in its nature. And if you're already signed up or thinking about coming over here on a tour, uh, in November with our Lassie tours, please, there's no need to change your mind. Uh, the country of Israel isn't falling apart. Um, there's not regional war here, okay? Everything's fine. <laughs> um, in Sunday morning's clash, it was a fairly sustained event. And on that last day of the Eid el-Adha festival, police imposed an age restriction to Muslim worshipers limiting entrance to Jerusalem's holy site to men over 50. Uh, there were no injuries or arrests reported. This morning's uh, confrontation was brief uh, with youths, again, barricading themselves within Al-Aqsa Mosque and the Israeli paramilitary forces entering the mosque using crowd dispersal methods to calm things down and then a standoff ensued. This is likely to continue for the next few days now that a Jewish extremist group uh, the Temple Mount and Land of Israel Faithful Movement, as they are called, has called for a march to the compound on Wednesday. Again, this is happening because uh, it's perceived that Jews are seeking to strengthen their presence and access to the complex, which is Islam's third holiest site. Chuck? Meanwhile, I imagine most of the Jewish people are focused on today's Jewish holiday, right? That's correct, Chuck. Today starts the Sukkot holiday period, uh, which is eight days long and commemorates the children of Israel's wandering in the desert after leaving Egypt before they entered the Promised Land. And this really ups the tension here in the Old City because 
there is a lot of uh, nationalism that is evident and the extra security measures and restrictions further exasperates the situation. Chuck. Russia and its involvement in Syria was a hot topic in the United States last night. President Putin was on 60 Minutes. He'll be talking to the world leaders at the UN today about the situation. What is the press saying there in the Middle East? Well, really, Chuck, Russia's actions are doing all the talking right now. Um, although it is a small military contingent, um, it has grown and it has engaged Syrian rebel forces on the ground. Now, Russia sees a window of opportunity since its embassy in Damascus was attacked. Uh, but the worrying thing is that Russia is going to take its fight to Syrian rebels and Islamist groups who are seeking to oust Bashar al-Assad, Syria's president, and not the Islamic State, as they say. Um, those groups are now going to strike at Russian forces, and there's many players like Turkey and the Arab Gulf states who are backing some of these rebel groups. So this has the potential to get international and to get complicated and potentially ugly more so than the Ukraine. Chuck? Complicated is a good word to use. So let me ask you the same question that <clears throat> Charlie Rose asked Vladimir Putin last night. Is it fair to say Russia is, in fact, seeking to expand its influence in the region? Yes, but uh, this, at this stage, Russia is there to defend its naval base. And Mr. Putin is calling for this regional coordinating uh, structure, he calls it, uh, against Islamic State. So that's the headliner, if you will. <laughs> but they don't want Bashar Assad to fall. That is clear. Um, and it is correct that they want to expand their influence, which remember, uh, they're already doing in a significant way here in the region with the military deals that they're doing with Egypt when the United States dropped out a few years ago. Um, they are selling advanced missile defense systems to Iran. And really, um, they're kind of on a roll right now after Crimea and the Ukraine. So that's what is in the mind of Russian President Vladimir Putin, it seems. Chuck? All right. Thank you very much, Brian. That's Brian Bush reporting on what looks like a gorgeous day in Jerusalem. A reminder, Brian gives us exclusive content from Israel, but it's only available on the Harvest Show Facebook page. So you have to make sure you like us. You really like us on Facebook. Coming up later, Pastor Charles has your prayer request. But now, a new feature here on The Harvest Show as we bring you Pastor Mark Lance with today's motivational moment. All right, I've got a question for you today. What is the most important decision in life you are ever going to make? I know, life is full of decisions. Some are easy, some are more difficult, that have much higher stakes. Some decisions are going to affect more than others and your ability to lead and to live. But some decisions are going to be financial. There's going to be some that are more personal or relational. But there's one decision that every effective, successful individual must be willing to make. And that one decision is this. Take 100% responsibility for your life. Unless you're willing to make this decision, no other decision is going to matter in your life. And unfortunately, what we've done is we've become accustomed to blame other sources for the parts of our life that maybe are not working out the way we want to. You know, when we don't succeed, we like to find a reason or excuse as to why it didn't work out. I love this quote by Lou Holtz, great NCAA football coach. He said, the man who complains about the way the ball bounces is likely the one who dropped it. We blame the economy. Maybe we blame the lack of opportunity. We blame our spouse, the weather, lack of money, lack of resources, anything we can think of on which to pin the blame for our lack of success. We never really want to admit the real problem lies within us. So if I'm going to become the person that I was born to be, it's going to happen when I make the decision. And today you're going to make this decision to stop blaming your past, stop blaming your background, stop blaming your lack of training or maybe any other source for your lack of effectiveness. There's a pervasive myth in our world that we've got to, we've got to overcome. It's this myth that we are entitled to a successful life. Maybe somewhere in the great beyond, there's someone who's going to bring success, bring happiness, bring financial security, all the things that we want and just drop them into our lap. 
We look at great people who have accomplished great things and we have this myth in our mind that they instantaneously achieved everything they've done and we want their results without the effort they have exerted. The fact of the matter is, friend, God has not entrusted anybody else with the results of your life but you. So I'm going to challenge you today. Here's the primary principle. Take 100% responsibility for what you've been given in life. Know that the results you achieve are going to be in direct proportion to the efforts that you put forth. This is a liberating moment, my friend. This is a freeing moment. You're free because now you don't have any excuse as to why you've not succeeded. You're now in complete control. You're in the driver's seat of using what God's given to you for your full potential. It releases you to be who you are in Christ and stop trying to be somebody that you're not. Stop trying to copy somebody else's results and realize you are unique. You are special in the sight of God. Nobody's got the same abilities and gifts that you you do think about that you are just the person God wanted you to be he gave you the circumstances in which you were raised he gave you the set of parents he wanted you to have he knew when and where he wanted you to be born there is nothing in your life that has accidentally happened what what are you waiting on today quit using those excuses make this decision today to accept full responsibility for being the person you were born to be and this is a great day I'm excited for you because when you get rid of the weights of excuses you're going to soar so high, you're going to become the person you never thought you could be. Get rid of the excuses. Make the decision. You are responsible today by the grace of God, and you will become who you were born to be. I'm in the Prayer Line Center with Pastor Charles today. I'd love to hear from you. Any time of the day or night, 24-7, you can reach Prayer Line by dialing 1-800-365-3732. You can also email your prayer requests, praise reports, whatever it is that you'd like to share to prayer at lissy.com. And if you go to worldharvest.com, that's the prayer line uh, exclusive interactive website where you can post your prayer requests as well as see the prayer requests of others and, and pray for someone else as well. And Pastor Charles, that's what we want to do today. We want to pray for some of those that have uh, called in, friends watching right. right now, and you've got some requests there with you today. I do, I do, I do, I do. Vicki in uh, Colorado, Vicki uh, calls us and says, please agree with me in prayer. Let my family be blessed to solve the family issues that we share. My son has run away from his father and we ask that the Lord sends him back. Mm -hmm. And then we have Rick in Jamaica. Thanks, uh, Rick, for calling us. Rick says, please pray that the Lord bless me with protection and with a wife in America. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then we got Deidre. Deidre in California. You know, and that, you know, we have people in America that wants wives from Jamaica, so right. I don't know. You know, maybe we can switch. <laughs> then we got Deidre in California says, I have been looking for a job for some time now, and things are getting tight. Four years of unemployment is unacceptable, Amen. she says. Yep. Please pray I get a great job. And uh, then we have Dorcas in California. Dorcas says, I need prayer and I need it now. She says, I have found myself single with three sets of twins, all under the age of wow. five. Oh my. And she says, of course, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I know God does. Please pray that he reveals his plan to me. Wow. Wow. Yeah. There's some... Uh some unusual prayer requests that come from time to time, they, right? They, they are. They, uh, we have all types of prayer requests, uh, Stefan, at all times of day and night. Yeah. And so you never know what people are going through today. Yeah, yeah. the good thing to know, though, is that uh, no matter where we are in life, no matter mm -hmm. what's going on, we can reach out to God. He's gracious. Right. He's merciful. Right. He's good. And uh, he helps us when we cry out in time of need. You know, Jesus said... Uh, I haven't come for those that are well. That's those right. that are well don't need a physician. That's right. Those that are not doing well, those that are sick, they're the ones that need a physician. And so when we look at uh, our lives, when we look at those around us, we say, okay, well, you know, I don't know, would God be interested in that? Yes, he is interested in those he types is. of prayer requests yeah. because right. he came to seek and save that which was lost, lost, those who are lost. And so when we find ourselves kind of lost in the way, mm -hmm. we can turn to the Lord knowing that he's faithful and good. Would you pray Absolutely. for those that have called Absolutely. in today, Pastor? Yes, Father in heaven, we just thank you today, Lord God, that you do indeed hear us. Lord, we know that our spirit, Lord God, sometimes goes contrary to yours, but we're asking you today, Lord, to help us to come home. We're asking you, Lord God, to bring that son back 
Lord God, and to yes, Lord. bring that job into the life yes, of Lord. our sister, Lord God. And Father, we know that you know the plans that you have for our sister with the three sets of twins, Lord, and we know that those plans are good. And we're just asking you today, Lord, to move on their behalf and extend favor in the mighty name of your son. Amen and amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Charles. I want to say thank you for calling if you've already done so. If not, again, prayer lines here 24-7, any time of the day or night, 1-800-365-3732. If you're calling outside the United States from Jamaica or Europe or Africa or Central America or wherever it may be, you can dial directly into prayer line by dialing plus one five seven four. 291-1010. Up next, Building 429. We enjoyed them immensely during World Pulse Festival 2015. Here they are with Where I Belong. Sometimes it feels like I'm watching from the outside. Tell you what I've come to know. Somebody make some noise if you know what I'm talking about tonight. So tell me what you know. like you have helped send over 700,000 Bibles around the world through our Spread the Word ministry. We're so thankful for your support to help us take the best news of all time to more of those hungry to hear it. Through your generosity, many thousands have already read about the saving grace of Jesus Christ. And with your support, we look forward to helping fulfill Dr. Lester Sumrall's vision of reaching the untold billions yet untold with the gospel. The eyes of the world focus on Jerusalem, and the world press critiques its every move. Christian believers seek to come to the city to walk where Jesus walked. I'm Brian Bush, and I live in Jerusalem's old city, reporting three times a week on The Harvest Show. Think of me as your eyes and ears. Join me 
as we look at things in the Middle East from a Christian perspective on The Harvest Show on this Let's See broadcasting channel. ISIS terrorists have slaughtered thousands of Christians and moderate Muslims across the Middle East. Over a million people have fled their homes. Many, after being given the ultimatum, convert to Islam or die. They've lost everything because they refused to renounce Christ. With every hour that passes, the situation grows worse for tens of thousands of people who were driven from their homes by ISIS. Feed the Hungry has committed to support these refugees by providing a box of food that would last an entire month. Today, with your gift of $70, you can help five families know that they are not forgotten. We need you to act now. Please call 1-877-769-9268 or visit feedthehungry.org. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of His hands. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. Take delight in the Lord. He will give you the desires of your heart. What if you'd never had an opportunity to read the Bible? Can you imagine never having read the Beatitudes? The 23rd Psalm or those amazing words, For God so loved the world? Today, you can change the life of a boy or girl in Africa by giving him or her a chance to read God's Word for the very first time. Every $5 you give will send a Bible to a hurting boy or girl in Liberia, Malawi, or Uganda. $25 will send five Bibles. $50 will send 10 copies of God's Word. And if you can send a most generous gift of $100, you'll bless 20 children with Bibles. Christian leaders in Africa have asked us to send as many Bibles as possible. Our goal is to send 10,000 Bibles to children who have endured a great deal of suffering in their young lives. Many are orphans. Others have lost their homes to war. All are familiar with the pain of poverty. I've had the privilege of being in Africa and giving a Bible, a spread the word Bible to a young child. What an incredible experience as you look and you know that you're giving them the most precious gift they've ever received and they look up and say thank you. Please respond with a generous gift today. Help us reach out to the children Christ loves, the children he died for. Any amount you give will help boys and girls learn about God's love and will also win souls for his kingdom. Please give now. Call the C Broadcasting at 1-800-365-3732, 1-800-365-3732, or give online at lacy.com. That's lacy.com. Thank you. one 800 365 is the number to call to help us spread the word. You just heard Pete Summerall talking about spreading the word and sending Bibles to people around the world outside of the United States. We want you to help us do this. We need your help. You can go to lacy.com to give safe and secure online. We're talking about $5 sends out one Bible. $180 will send out a case of 36 Bibles. And here's what you're doing when you do so. You help us to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ, that he came to this world to die for sinful humanity so that we could spend eternity with him. But there are people, Chuck, around the world who would, who'd, who've never even heard the message. Well, and that's why it's so important that we be able to get these Bibles out there because what happens is through shortwave radio, which is another ministry that you support and we're thankful that you do, they hear a message of Jesus Christ. They're curious. They want to learn more. The best way for them to learn more is to read about Jesus Christ. And the best way they can read about Jesus Christ is in the Bible. Boy, there's no more effective way for us to get that message to them. Five dollars to print and ship a Bible anywhere in the world? Are you kidding me? You can't beat that deal. And yet we can make it happen for that price thanks to deals that we've been able to strike with our printer, deals that we've been able to strike, and 
how we send these out, but we still need your help. We need that $5 for every Bible, so that's where you come in, 1-800-365-3732, the number. Or you can give online, safe and secure, at lacy.com and really change somebody's life for the better. We talked at the beginning of the show about how social media is out there, and Mark Zuckerberg mm -hmm. wants to get people onto Facebook and give them Internet access, and, and certainly that can change somebody's life too, but not nearly as profoundly as putting a Bible in their hand. Absolutely. You know, the Word of God, it is powerful. It is alive. It is sharper than any two-edged sword, as we read in the Word itself, and it has the power to change a person's life. Uh, you know, this $5, tomorrow's National Coffee Day. And we could take $5 and go get a latte or go get your favorite thing mixed in with this, that, and the other. And, you know, it'll be gone that quickly. Mm -hmm. But you can take that $5 and send someone a copy of the Word of God, as Pete Summerall shared earlier in today's program. In some places that we've been to, two weeks, three weeks of earnings equates to buying a Bible. So a family has no hope of ever getting their own Bible uh, because just the economy just doesn't work that way. When we can put the Bible in their hands and send it to them, in Jesus' name, it is a life changing event and all that can happen Val for just five dollars. That's right so give us a call 1-800-365-3732 or you can give safe and secure online at lacy.com. We want to remind you that Pastor Mark Lance will be with us tomorrow and you can ask him a question. We have a segment called Ask the Pastor. So I know Chuck Freebie is just has so many questions he has for Pastor Mark and you do too. So you can go to live at lacy.com. I could ask him a lot of questions, like where was he on the night of August 8th? No, uh, <laughs> not, not anything incriminating like that, but there, I'm sure there are some great theological questions you can mm -hmm. ask Pastor Mark, and, and that's the great way to do it. And do it through our Facebook page, and we remind you to like us on Facebook because, well, that's really important to us to be liked. See you tomorrow <laughs> on Harvest. <laughs>